Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the ASUS Zenscreen Inc. MB14 AHD. First of all, a disclaimer, this is a review unit on loan from ASUS Singapore. However, all the opinions in this video are my own. And this review is going to be quite long, so if you want to save time, you can use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this video. This is a portable 14-inch touchscreen display with 1080p resolution and it supports pen input. Official retail price for this display is US $369. Here in Singapore, it's $599. You can see the list of locations where this is sold in Singapore in the video description below. All right, let me just give you the bottom line up front. The pen performance is good for writing and drawing simple diagrams. However, it's not good enough for creating digital art. This display looks good. The touch screen is quite responsive. It's compact, portable, and the built-in kickstand is quite convenient. The limitations or downsides would be the viewing angles. As you can see from this angle, the brightness drops dramatically. Colors on this display look all right out of the box. However, based on my measurements, I measured color support for 63% sRGB only and maximum brightness of 147 nits. Color accuracy is not the priority here and that may not be important because from what I can see on ASUS website, this display seems to be targeted at office workers or those who need a display with pen input for the occasional writing. The main selling point here is portability, touch screen and pen input. If you do not need pen input, you can actually go with other portable monitors which are more affordable. I have many portable displays and I can tell you that for displays that do not support pen input, when you write on them with a rubber tip stylus, chances are you are going to get broken lines or the pen performance is going to be sluggish. All right, let's move on to the full review where I present to you my findings and you can decide whether or not this ASUS display is worth your money. Let's take a look at the items included in the box which I have already unpacked. This is the carrying sleeve, quick start guide, warranty info, a 1.1 meter long micro HDMI to full size HDMI cable, a 1.2 meter long USB-C to USB-C video cable, a 1.5 meter long USB-C to USB type A cable, the pen, the USB power adapter. This carrying sleeve is not padded, but the material is quite thick, so this should provide some protection for the display. And there is a small pocket here for the pen. There are no pockets for the cables though. All three cables are braided and the quality looks really good. This looks really durable. Design of this display is very clean and simple. As you can see, it's quite reflective. The weight is 870 grams. It's actually thicker than other portable monitors I have tested, but it's still very compact. On the back, there is the built-in kickstand. And at the bottom, we have two rubber feet here and some rubber padding here. There is a tripod mount. But be careful when you're using a tripod because this is quite thin. You don't actually have to use this display with a tripod because there is a built-in kickstand. But if you do use it with a tripod, be very careful not to drop the display. If the tripod topples like this, the bottom of the display may crack or break off. There are other ASUS portable displays with tripod mounting on the back, which I think is a safer design. I like the matte textured metal surface on the back. The build quality is solid with very minimal flex. So this is the kickstand. To open it, you have to use the latch on this side because there is no latch on this side. And there is a reason for that because this cutout here allows the display to deploy vertically. And this is quite stable except there is no rubber grip at the bottom here so it glides around on the table quite easily. On the other side, on the horizontal side, there are rubber feet at the bottom and also on the back of the kickstand for grip. All the buttons and ports are on the left side of the display. This is the power button. These three buttons are for the OSD. This is micro HDMI. 
The HDMI specification is not listed on ASUS website. They only mention HDCP version 1.4. These two are USB Type-C with display port functionality and that's the 3.5 millimeter audio jack there are no speakers on this display i've just connected the display to this windows tablet that i have using the usb-c cable if you want to use the hdmi cable you have to connect an additional cable for power because hdmi does not transmit power with USB-C, you can get video and power and data together. This display looks good. Bezels are quite thin at the top and on the sides, thicker at the bottom, and there's the ASUS logo. The screen size is 14 inches and the resolution is 1080p. So there is going to be slight pixelation. By the way, I had to increase the scaling to 125% because on a 14-inch display with 100% scaling, the text is too small for my personal preference. So now at 125%, the pixelation is even more noticeable. The display is a touch screen that supports 10-point touch and supports finger gestures and uh, finger gesture animation is quite fluid so as I scroll down I can see the screen jutter that's due to the 60 Hertz refresh rate the colors on this display look all right out of the box however the color gamut is quite limited I measured color support for 63% sRGB 48% Adobe RGB, 47% P3, and 43% NTSC, and a maximum brightness of 147 nits. The maximum brightness is still sufficient because this display is mostly going to be used indoors. The colors and brightness are also affected by the viewing angle, so the brightness drops dramatically. Same when you have the display. Uh, like this and like this and that's how reflective the display is you get the best image quality when you view the display from the front without any reflections this display has auto rotation for the orientation but it only works with windows and you need to install the asus display widget light so after you install the driver um, and you change the orientation of the display the content will rotate automatically as mentioned earlier because there is no grip at the bottom uh, this can move quite easily on the table the display widget app can be used to change the display settings as well or you can use the physical buttons on the side to navigate the OSD menu and it's very easy to navigate the menus because the virtual buttons correspond to the physical buttons on the side. Design of the pen is almost cylindrical except for this flat side here which allows you to attach the pen to the side of the display. There are two shortcut buttons. The shortcuts will depend on the apps you use. The pen tip has slight movement to it. The pen supports MPP2, that's Microsoft Pen Protocol 2, so it supports tilt sensitivity and slightly over 4000 levels of pressure sensitivity. There is also palm rejection. The pen is powered by a single AAAA -A 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 battery, but the battery is not included. Battery life can last for months. The pen has solid build quality because it's made with metal and this is rather comfortable to hold. The pen tip glides very smoothly on the display. The display is laminated so there is almost no gap between the LCD and the pen tip and cursor tracking is quite accurate so the cursor is always directly beneath the pen tip. There is some latency, so here you can see the line trying to catch up with the pen tip, but this is very typical latency you can expect with displays that support pen input. For writing purposes, it works fine. You can definitely see some latency, but in this case, it doesn't really affect my handwriting. My handwriting can still be captured rather accurately. 
There is default pump rejection provided by the pen, but the performance of pump rejection will depend a lot on the apps you use. So for example, with this app, Wacom Bamboo Paper, if I place my palm on the display, you can see it actually introduces stray strokes. This app is Concepts, so when I place my palm on the display or if I try to draw or write with my finger, nothing will happen because this app has been configured to accept only pen input. So if I want to write, I can place my palm on the display to write. And this display supports 10 point uh, finger gestures. So you can use your finger gestures for navigation, zoom in and out, rotate, pan or scroll. To get the best performance out of the pen, you have to find the app that works best for you. For example, with Microsoft OneNote, you can write and when your hand is on the display, it has palm rejection. However, if you do a quick tap, it's going to go into text insertion mode and that may prevent you from writing. And now I can write again. And if you tap and you hold for too long, it calls up this contextual menu and you won't be able to write because the app thinks you want to do something else. It's best to find an app that allows you to write without interruptions. That would be best. See? It goes into text insertion mode again and it breaks my writing flow. I find that even for apps that support pen input, sometimes when you have your palm on the display, the strokes may not appear for whatever reason. So if you want better writing performance, it's best to not have your palm on the display. For writing and presentation, this should work fine. For example, you can connect your computer to a projector and you can write or draw things on this display and have this shown in the projection. So that can be one way to use uh, this display. There is no mention of support for Mac OS on ASUS website. You can use this as an external display for a Mac, but the pen performance is not ideal. When drawing or writing, there are many broken lines and the touch screen doesn't work. I tested the display with an Android tablet as well and the screen would keep flashing the ASUS logo. So it doesn't work with Android, at least with this tablet that I have here. To conclude, this display works as advertised. The touch screen is quite useful and the touch functionality is fluid and responsive. Most of my issues with touch functionality comes down to palm rejection, which is not flawless, but that's due to the Windows implementation because I also have those palm rejection issues with my other Windows tablet. The pen support is useful if you need it. So my main issues with this display would be the palm rejection, which is not flawless and the less than ideal color support. But for office workers, um, the colors, they look all right. They look good enough. All right, so that's it for this review. If you have any questions regarding this display, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I hope this review is useful. See you guys again. Bye.